Efficient and reproducible blending process is critical to the manufacturing of oral drug delivery systems as the quality of the final product is driven by the quality of the blend. Therefore, the production of non-homogeneous blends results in discrepancy in the content of the active pharmaceutical ingredient and eventually product failure. Hi. My name is Bhaskar Napte and today we are going to discuss the most prominent reasons for blend uniformity failure. So what are the reasons for the blend uniformity failure? And here is the number one in front of you. The difference in particle size between API and excipient. Assume that you are using a dry mixing compression process or direct compression process. In case if the particle size of the API and the excipients is not same, the segregation can happen very easily. And because of that, you may end up with the non-homogeneous blend. The second reason for failure of blend uniformity is the difference in bulk density for API and another excipient. Just imagine for a second that your API is having a high bulk density. So your API is heavier as compared to another excipient. So what is going to happen because of this heavy API? Your API can get settled down at the bottom of the blender, at the bottom of the blender during the blending process. And because of that, your blend can become the unhomogeneous and same can be the case for excipient also so if some of the excipients are bulkier they are having high bulk density they becomes heavy and hence they will get settled at the bottom of your blender during the blending process and that makes your blend non-homogeneous the third reason can be formation of aggregates and the lumps now this particular issue can get arises in case if you are using a weight granulation process. So as a part of weight granulation process, you are forming a dermas by using a aqueous or maybe organic solvent and out of that the granules are prepared. So what is your granulation process? If the process is not well optimized, you can end up with the aggregates and the lumps. And this can further lead to a non-homogeneous blend. The fourth reason can be insufficient or excess blending time. So insufficient time means what? You need to, let us say, rotate the blender for 5 minutes. If you rotate the blender for three minutes then it is called as insufficient blending time which is not sufficient for complete blending of your entire blend but if you over blend it if you excess the blending time then the demixing can happen means you will get a uniform blend let us say at five minutes but further if you blend uh, if you further blend the uh, the content of blender for let us say another five minutes that is total 10 minutes your blend will actually get demixed or it will become non-homogeneous so over uh, blending is also not a good for the homogeneity of the blend now fifth point is very important that is sampling error that means it can be about the sampling devices you are using for sampling of the blend and it can also about the sample amount so sampling device plays a very important role in determining the exact characteristics of the blend sample the segregation of sample can happen during taking the blend sample itself and once the segregation gets happened 
your samples originality is already been lost your samples integrity is already been lost and hence you will not be able to reflect the actual uniformity of the blend during the analysis similarly the sample quantity or amount is also very important you must make an effort plan the experiments by taking the sample amount of 1x to 10x x can be your unit dose weight or the weight of the tablet or field weight of the capsule so take 1x 2x 3x 4x 5x 6x up to 10x and then understand which amount gives more reproducible result it is okay to have a blending sample up to 3x but in case if the 3x doesn't yield the uniformity result for the blend the higher amount is justifiable and the last but not the least is the weighing error so whenever you get the sample done for the blend it is very important that you must not partially weigh the sample now what is going to happen if you partially weigh the sample you may end up transferring the sample from the glass container onto the butter paper now during this transfer as you intend to weigh exactly 100 milligram of the blend sample you will try to make it as accurate as possible and during this weighing process the segregation can happen in case if your blend sample is having some coarse material and the fine particles and this is further going to lead your non homogeneous blend result so what is the advice for share is don't use partially weight blend sample quantities you transfer the entire sample of the blend in your volumetric flask so that there is no question of segregation because of the weighing i hope this six point will help you to understanding what are the reasons for the non homogeneous blend result thank you so much